Are you ready for a dish that's so good that I was willing to take three days to make it? Well, I think it's good at least. Each component has to be made separately. Then you put it all together at the end. It's basically a fancied up casserole. The ingredient that takes the longest time is the cheese, but most of that time is aging. The rest of the recipe really isn't that hard. You start the cheese by heating salted milk over medium low heat to a heavy simmer for about 30 minutes. While it's cooking, you want to stir it constantly. Never let it get to a boil. After 30 minutes, turn off the heat and add vinegar slowly while still stirring. Keep stirring for about 10 minutes until curds form. Once you have a good number of curds, strain off the liquid into a towel-lined sieve. If you don't have a towel, you can use a clean but wet pillowcase. Squeeze the remaining liquid out of the curds with the towel. Get just as much liquid as you can out of there. I'm gonna age this for a few days, but you can go for longer if you like. The next step is to smoke the lamb. I've made this recipe before, maybe about 10 years ago, and it was a hit. We'll see what people think today. We want a nice and juicy piece of lamb from this. In my opinion, marinating the lamb helps keep it juicy. I'll make the marinade by grinding some spices until a paste forms. Then I mix the spice paste into some olive oil. That's the marinade. These shanks are pretty lean, but if you use a fattier cut of lamb, you may want to remove some of the fat. Okay, I take the marinade and rub it all over the lamb. I'm gonna let the lamb marinate for about an hour. You could go as long as a day if you wanted. After the lamb is marinated, I'll smoke it for about four hours at 250 degrees. Doesn't that look amazing? It's glistening and covered in tasty spices and herbs. I'm gonna chunk it up so it's ready to be added to the casserole and I'll make sure to save some of the juice from the lamb. The pasta I'm making next will soak up all that sauce. On the menu for today, it says sweet pasta. I put that because it's shorter and I was running out of space. There's a lot of ingredients in this dish. But growing up, this veggie was called rutabaga. It's literally a cross between a turnip and cabbage and tastes just like that. Kind of like a Brussels sprout met a radish and fell in love. My mom would serve rutabaga up like mashed potatoes or in cubes with some butter and salt. But today we're gonna use it to make a gnocchi. Start by wrapping the rutabaga, potato, and garlic in foil. Wrap them separately and bake them until they're tender. The garlic will be done in 40 minutes. The potato will take about an hour. The rutabaga will be done in 90 minutes. After they're cooked, mash the roasted vegetables with seasoning and a beaten egg. After that's all combined, add the flour in batches until a dough forms. Roll the dough flat about half an inch thick. I'm using a floured cutter too to keep the gnocchi even. Then I'm cutting them into quarters. Now that these are all formed up, I'll fry them in batches. It only takes three to four minutes to cook them, and they're golden brown fluffy pillows. The last component of the casserole is the macerated cherry tomatoes. This is super easy. If you have small tomatoes, all you do is prick each tomato about three times and drop them in some balsamic vinegar. The holes help the balsamic penetrate into the flesh. But I have larger tomatoes, so I'm quartering them. Let that sit for at least 20 minutes, but not so long that the tomatoes get soggy. This component adds acidity to the dish. Okay, let's put it all together. Right before serving, combine all of the ingredients in a casserole pan and heat them up a bit. About 15 to 20 minutes at 350 degrees should be enough. This will get everything steamy and the natural juices from the lamb and the creamy cheese will melt a bit to bring everything together. I think it's gonna be delicious. And here it is. I think that looks amazing. Yes, it's a casserole, but this isn't your everyday casserole. It's a casserole fit for a feast and we're serving it with a salad.